Did he? Yes. Okay. When most people set up a system to limit transaction velocity of their customers, they have it set up so that every 30 days a customer will be allowed to spend a certain amount. And when we map this out, it, un it ends up looking like this. However, there's one problem with this model, uh, which is that uh, it's probably not designed by somebody that knows a lot about business or economy, for that matter, or even security. Um, essentially, what the goal is is to put some kind of a ceiling on uh, how much person, how much money a person can spend, such as a two hundred dollar ceiling. So we'll say every thirty days a person can spend up to two hundred dollars. And um, the problem with this is that it's not a very realistic, real-world situation. Sometimes a customer is going to want to spend more than two hundred dollars within a thirty-day period, and maybe even on one single transaction. Other times they might want to make a bunch of small transactions which can add up to uh, two hundred dollars. Um, and then the next time that they want to make another small transaction, they can't. But from looking at these four small transactions here, we can see this looks like a pretty safe customer, a pretty reliable guy. He's already had made several different transactions, uh, which is something that signals loyalty. And what I think is the uh, greatest flaw in setting up a system that is based on something such as a 30-day time frame with a fixed amount uh, in this manner um, is the rise over run, which uh, in mathematics we learn that if we have our chart, we, we got our, oops, that's our y-axis and our x-axis, we have the rise over the run, which is some, which is the slant of a uh, plot line. And so uh, let's take a quick look at this. $200 every 30 days, pretty unrealistic um, behavior for somebody. You know, as we know, behavior is completely uh, unpredictable and often unexpected. And it's also uncontrollable. But uh, so, you know, we try to set reasonable limits, although it's impossible to set up something that's perfect. Uh, so most people just set up something really basic like this. They don't give it too much thought. I'm going to show you now what the problem is with this kind of system by demonstrating the rise over run. Um, what we have happening is we're expecting that a, a person is just going to you know, be like zero and then whoop, down, zero, whoop, down, zero. So their their rise over run looks a little bit like this. They got to wait for that 30 days. Before they can spend another $200 total. Now, uh what's more reasonable is to set up a system where First, I'll put down my tick marks. Each tick mark is 30 days. The ceiling is still $200. But, if a person makes a transaction here, they should not have to wait a whole nother 30 days before they can make a little tiny transaction here. Um, what you should do, if you want to design your system correctly, is that the recovery rate of someone's transaction velocity, how much they're allowed to spend, which is a function of time and money, rise over run, that should recover at a daily rate, not just once every 30 days. The problem is how the tick marks are set. So, um, all you need to do is take that rise over run here we go. 
Uh, so a person has spent uh, $200 on this day right here. If they want to spend this much money on this day, that's fine. If they want to spend this much money on this day, that's fine. If they want to spend this much money on this day, that's fine. Under uh, the previous system, that's impossible. They have to wait 30 days. Um, I'll just make an example. A person spends $200 today. Tomorrow they cannot spend $1. The day after tomorrow they cannot spend $1. The day after that day they cannot spend $1 until a full 30 days has, has transpired. Uh, so the real lesson here is to set your rise over run and use a daily recovery rate. Any time that you're developing any kind of a transaction velocity limiting system for your customers as a risk management measure. End video.